The Manchester sales of a saga ended a few months ago with the Sir Jim Ratcliffe ratification and purchase of the 27% of the Manchester United footballing operations by the Glazers. However, the saga has been a long drawn process which led to a lot of speculations what really, really went down in the bidding process. We know that Rain Group and Joe Revich was handling the shadow bidding process, but we also seen reports by Adam Crafton, brilliant Adam Crafton from The Athletic, claiming that Sir James Ratcliffe and kind of Manchester United PSC Glazers kind of been a little bit of in cahoots, perhaps, perhaps, but they are seeking legal ramifications for defamatory claims. And although the dust has settled, the filings are out there. We're talking about the SEC filings. We're going to discuss what Adam Crafton has been written and apply our logic and reasoning to discuss as a fan base. Of course, this is MUFC Realist TV and Mick Ruby. You know what to do. Like and subscribe, and we should see you in a couple of seconds. Has the Premier League ever been more challenging than up like now? I feel welcome. Uh, this is my home and I want to achieve success. Okay? All doing. It is actually match day today. and But still, there's news coming out that we cannot uh, afford not to talk about, of course. We're talking about the brilliant report that came out from Adam Crafton today that Sh Sh Sheikh Yassim Lawyers has written a complaint and also filed a potential lawsuit towards the Manchester United PLC owners, Joel and Avram Glazers. So what is that all about? You know, what is the big mistake of, Sir, you know, 92 Holding Foundation? Could they have been legally got the club or does actually the owner of the price items decide who do you want to sell to? There's a lot of questions we're going to unpack here today because at the end of the day, we are a footballing club, not a business, and we are Glazers out full sale only. However, let's talk about this cool and composed. But before we continue, guys, let us see what's going on here in the fray. Well, listen, let's start with this brilliant report. And there's 12 of you watching, but I can't really see your comments, to be honest. Now your comments are starting to load in, so big up to you. Good afternoon to you, Ashid, as well. Good afternoon. Slowly, slowly, it's loading in. But let's start with this. This is a new show. This is me going over what Adam Crafton is saying. There's a few points that we need to unpack. And here we start with the breaking news coming from Adam Crafton. You can see here is a tweet today that Sheikh Yassim lawyers have written to Manchester United to demand the seize of pattern of misleading and defamatory statements after Sir Jim Ratcliffe joked that it did not exist and the club SEC filing implied Qatar bid didn't produce proof of funds. Now, that is a statement, right? That is definitely a statement. However, if you then continue on point number one, what Crafton is saying here, uh, let me just scroll down here. Um, I'm going to read this out and then I'm going to apply my thinking to it, right? Nothing sensational, just cool and composed, providing a little bit of a voice of reasoning. He says here, continue, number one, point number one, that Ratcliffe said the Glazers never met Yassim. Now, this was a theme um, presented over the press, over numerous uh, articles, but Joel and Avi Glazers, mean Avram Glazers, did meet Yassim in New York City on July 26, 2023. Now, park that date. Like, I want to come back to that date, right? Manchester United did not comment when approached yesterday. Now, why wouldn't they comment? Um, what happened on July 26, there was a meeting in New York, 100%. And there was reports to say that Sir Jim Ratcliffe's bid was blown out of the water. Sheikh Yassim was in pole position. He was granted exclusivity. Bloomberg was reporting, everyone re re was reporting, and what happened in between there, right? So, a little bit of weird statement, right, that he never existed. So, but on the other hand, he met with Joel and Avram. That's been confirmed as well, right? Point number two, what we we're going to discuss about here, which is 
very, very important point in the MUFC SEC filings. This is SEC filings means that after you've gone through a bidding process, you're obliged by law because you're a public listed company trading on New York Stock Exchange to declare what really went on step by step. So MUFC filings say Qatar never produced customary financing commitment letter means proof of funds. So this was written in the SAC filings, and this is the grounds of this information lawsuit. But Sir Jim Ra- but uh, Sheikh Yassim's lawyers claim proof of funds came via Qatar's National Bank guarantee of $5.72 billion plus a commitment to clearing the $531 million debt. And Adam Crafton says here, I have independently seen evidence of this bank guarantee. So that is factual evidence, right? One side says that, you know, they lied in this SEC finding that there was no proof of funds, while Qatar is saying, well, hang on a second, we did provide you a guarantee letter claiming that we do have proof of funds. We do, this is our intention, and plus, we're going to clear the remaining of the debt. And Adam Craft here from Athletic has actually seen these documents. So that begs the question, what is the truth? Doesn't matter, right? Um, For me, I will put my my thoughts to it later on what really might have gone on here in, in terms of why and how and when and what. But let's just continue reading the Crafton's article or tweets. And at the end of the day, what we can do as a community, just engage with each other, right? I know the takeover is over. I know that we need to move on, but the Glazers are still here. And the Glazers has been doing some dodgy, shady business uh, at the end of the day. Um, it was very sus- suspicious for me that all of a sudden in December, it was rushed through. You remember on Christmas Eve, all of a sudden, boom, 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 bam. So something happened in between October and 24th of December that I really want to bring to the stage here as well. This is just my thought, though. Uh, Adam Crafton is saying here, lots of detail in here. However, the Yassim Bid team came to feel exasperated by the Glazers, though the process perceived mixed signals and indecision within the family with the inferences of Yassim's existence and proof of funds triggering the complaint. Well, on point two, they said they actually met Yassim, right, in New York, right? Yassim is a very private person. He's a sheikh. He's royalty, like, and of course, you have people, delegates that you hire to handle this sales negotiations. You have lawyered up. You have spent numerous money on lawyers, making sure that you are compliant. Um, so that is the point what Crafton is making. So I want to just go down further down um, in this tweet. This is a long series. Uh, if you have read the article, Adam is kind of breaking it down here on Twitter, but I'm just doing a summary here. The Qatar bid was under impression that they had preferred bidder status. Remember this. This was back in summer. You know, we're talking about 27, 25th July, that even the paper was reporting, even Bloomberg was reporting that all of a sudden, you know, Ineos bid was blown out of the water. Um, that was last summer. But this never formally in writing, though, according to what they're saying. Arguably, the Glazers simply say that they were just brokering the best possible deal for themselves. But Glazers never brokered this deal. It was the rain group, Joe Revich, that was brokering it in a shadow bidding process. So for me, that's been part of potential, a lot of mergers and acquisition change management. You know, the first thing you do when you actually go out for tender is to seek proof of funds. You seek that you're compliant with all the documents. So one year in the making, of course, you've been following all the steps and providing all the documents to Rain Group. And Rain Group are there to broke and present to the Glazers, who is the potential best buyer. Now, there might be a conflict of interest to say we don't want to sell to you, X, Y, Z. We don't want to sell 100%. We want to go to Sir Jim Ratcliffe. And that is fair and square, right? But, however, the crux comes with the SEC filing and its public document right now. And rightfully so, if you think that you'd be wrongfully done in this process, you have the right to sue. 100% you do. Uh, 
so let's continue reading this flip side. Um, he ends on to say that Yassim still not appear publicly. Well, he's a royal. He doesn't need to appear publicly. Even his own team struggled to get permission to produce a photo or answers on most simple details about his life. And SEC, an SEC filing said the Qatabid didn't treat Class A and Class B shares holder with equal value. Now, I want to pause on that point. Because this is a very important, and this is the thumbnail. This is the big mistake. Now, if you read the SEC filings, um, you got to understand one thing. And I've been saying this before. It didn't matter who bought the club, but equal buyout applies in the Cayman Island laws where Manchester United PLC are registered. That means that if you're going to do a buyout, you, mean, you need to offer equal price for class B holders and class A holders. Now, in a certain sense, it's led to believe that Qataris or United to Holding Foundation predominantly offered $36 per share above for the class Bs and $24 per share for class A, and they refused to increase that. If they only have offered equal, perhaps, perhaps, they wouldn't have gotten the deal over the line. But I think they also backed themselves in the corner here in certain ways that they didn't leave themselves with any wiggling room. You know, they told the world, everyone, that we are buying 100%. And at the end of the day, Glazes holds the key. Glazes decide who wants to sell. Are you with me? So basically, letter from Yassim lawyers now demands corrective to the SEC filing, plus immediately seizing of knowingly misleading and false statements by Ratcliffe himself, plus Manchester United, and says they reserve all rights for legal remedies. Manchester United declined to call comment. Wow. Wow. So this is kind of opening a can of worms, peeps, right? according to my opinion. It is kind of a little bit of a, a Pandora's box. Now, I personally just want to move on, but so far what we've seen is a lot of PR coming out, a lot of mismatching reports uh, where media has been treating this like a race, and at the end of the day, we as a fan base, we just want to move on. We just want the club to be rebuilt, glazes out. We want to be great again. But we missed this opportunity by the sounds of it that somebody was actually snubbed in a way. I'm sorry if I use my language, snubbed in a way, to actually have the fair crack of the whip to buy the full percent, 100% of the club and clear the debt. And this is what appealed to most of our fans. Instead, we ended up of a restructured bid. I mean, I stress to the point between July and October there, somewhere towards November, Surging Ratcliffe was given a leeway to restructure his bid. He went from 69% to 25% for some reason, which was arguably favored by the Glazers. Now, I have some theories why that I want to bring to this stage as well, but this is just my theory, right? Nothing sensational, just my thoughts, no news. Anyway, I just want to go to you guys. I want to see what you're saying. Let's see if the chat has been loaded up. Yes, it has been. Good afternoon to you as well. What you're saying, Milos Mitic, welcome to the show, Milos. I can read you in Serbian. Pozdrav, brate, Miki, Jelsti, ovo vraća Katar u igru za Manchester. In translation, in, in live Serbian translation, he says, hello, uh, is this opening the door for Qatar? Well, the thing is, Milos, the door was never closed. I mean, if you look at the contract, um, there was never mentioned any exclusivity for Sir Jim Ratcliffe. They left the door that whoever wants to buy out the remaining of the Class B shares have to offer over $34 per share. So for me, it was kind of a rust decision to say, okay, Jim, here you go. You know, we made this deal, but whoever wants to come in, you have first refusal, but you have to match this. That means that everyone can cash in. It's smart business in a way. 18 months down the track, doesn't necessarily have to be Qatar, could be anyone. 
can come in and say, we want to buy the remaining of Manchester United or full shares. That means that they walk away with billions in profits. Might even get over 10 billion or eight, what the original seeked for. So if you get the analogy, it's smart business, right? But what happens to the debt? Who's taking care of the debt? Nobody really knows at the moment. Uh, so far, it's been a lot of PR, and, and the proof will be in the pudding, right? Uh, Jamie Wayne, big up to you, mate. What you're saying, yo, yo, I'm just going to sit and listen and nothing else. Well, this channel is all about sitting and listening and also voicing your opinion. And uh, Nikki Carrigan, what you're saying, celebrate six months as a membership. So big up, Nikki. Thank you so much for being a member with us as well. Nikki, what you're saying here, and uh, there's still a number of people that believe Qatar are back. Um, I don't believe they are back, but I, I believe the seeking justification, ramification. Um, if you've been wrongfully accused or wrongfully done, of course you seek legal actions, right? Um, if you have produced, uh, played ball throughout this shadow bidding process, providing every single document that they requested for, even put the evaluation bid and the proof of funds, and then you come out to here and read the SSC filings that completely say something different. Of course, you have the right to seek for lawsuits, right? And defamation as well by Ratcliffe to say, well, he was joking about it. But you could take it out of context, but a little bit unnecessary comment when you have just one you know, the price, why do you have to throw an uppercut or bloody nose? And there are proud people at the end of the day, they want to sort of rectify their name. What's going to happen here might be a another Pandora's box. Um, so I'm afraid that <laughs> this is just a, a story that might brew up to something bigger. Um, at the end of the day, this lawsuit is probably against Manchester United PLC and the Glazers himself. So if you lied in the SAC filing, that is a federal crime, and you can 100% get done for, I don't know, end up in jail or lose all your business practices and be sued and fined. I don't really, really know and don't care. But for me, I hate the Glazers. <laughs> Cannot lie. And the fact is that we have forgotten that still in the background and we're still getting giddy that we are being promised. I mean, at the end of the day, like, you know, it's a double-edged sword. Of course, you know, I want us to do the proper thing, like, you know, to start building up from the top what we're already doing with Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, Will Cox, a sporting director, recruitment director, and then manager. And that is the structure that we need to do. And that is 11 years overdue. It's surprisingly that this magnitude of such a club has not had that before under the Glazers. And in comes Ratcliffe and takes over this sporting operation. So that is cool. That is cool. And I endorse that. That's fine. But on this channel, we always look at the balanced approach. Like we have to present, you know, side A and side two, right? And I cannot lie either. Like, you know, back in the summer, like, you know, like everyone else, I was Qatar in because that was guaranteed that the Glazers will go out the door and we clear the debt and we get the latest and greatest and still there are a lot of question marks here to be answered and I believe that you know Troll is limited or Ratcliffe and his team they realize we have a massive uphill battle like you know they probably walked in and did their assessment and said wow there's a lot of job to be done here um, a lot of dead wood to be cleared out a lot of you know past employments by the glazes um, and and um Woodward, um, the sits in the hierarchy. We're talking about potentially a new chief operating officer as Cloet Roche is most likely heading out the door. And they simply want to put in their own people, right? So there's a lot of things that needs to be done in terms of putting the best in class people. But um, I want to put my thoughts into this um, article as well from Adam Crafton. At the end of the day, you know, we all got tired and bored of it. And when you think about it, the Glazers out protest stopped. It's positive PR for the Glazers because they diverted everything, the blame and the shame, everything that was on negative on them to Sir Jim Ratcliffe, right? You take the heat now. We are in the backseat. You take the crap. So the proof will be in the pudding with the stadium, with the overhaul of the squad, who are going to purchase and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Um... Dark Crow, what you're saying? Um, 7B is a small, at least 10B 
Glazers have every right to reject the Qatar. Exactly. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. And the reason why might be a wild theory. But park that at the moment. Um, Jolly Malmin, how are you doing? Um, Jim told Glazers he was pulling out at the 24th. So panic mode. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that kind of transitions over to what I have to say as well. Um, Karen Reed, bit long time no seen. How you doing, Karen? Wow, good to see you. Um, hi, Mick. It's been a while. Hope you're okay. I'm fine, Karen. <laughs> Although uh, nine games left of the season, uh, we're hopping on one leg, Karen. You must agree that you know we are playing survival football. Um, I'm happy that Villa got spanked yesterday. I see that Villa will crumble at the moment. They have injuries. Spurs will be Spursy. So we can only look at ourselves. You know, win today, win against Liverpool, and I'll be really, really well. You know, and we can finish in top four, but we're not going to get giddy here. We are here about talking about the overall. Good afternoon to you, mental ball game. How are you doing? Um, Thomas Svedjen is what she's saying. Hey, hi, buddy. All the way from Gothenburg, Sweden. Hi, Mickey. Maybe I'm ignorant to these types of subjects, but it isn't easy as the Glazers just picked what they wanted. Um, well, certainly, certainly, I, I hear your point. And I, I'm just going to lay it down there, what I think. Okay, I'm just going to lay it down. You're absolutely right. If you're selling your house or your car, you want what's best for your house and car, right? You can take, you know, 10 billion for my house, 100% you could. But if I don't like you, right, for some simple reason, I would not sell to you for, for the love of my life, but I will sell it to somebody else that I favor more, even if it's less money. From a geopolitics standpoint, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this for YouTube's um, algorithm, but you, you just just follow my lead, right? What happened on the 7th of October uh, done in the Middle East, we're talking about the Gaza Strip and stuff like that, it's um, something changed over there, right? It's just a wild theory. But if you look at Joe Revich at the Rain Group, um, what, what, what they kind of, they are, and Glaze is what they are as well, without even mentioning, you know, you know what I'm talking about all of a sudden. And you know that Qatar has been the majority funder of supporting that resisting fightings and being the peddler um, for the Free Palestine Movement as well. Oops, I said it. Um, the tune changed, right? If you go back to see that when they were putting out the, the club for sale, they were mingling down in Qatar, meeting up with the royalties, pimping up the club. Joe Revich was there. Everything was hunky-dory, right? The money was there, proof of fund was there, but all of a sudden something changed, right? They gave Ratcliffe a leeway to restructure his bid. Perhaps they did have an argument because I heard also that they pulled out, I mean, from a very credible source, that 92 Holding got so pissed off, they pulled out all the PR, they canceled all the PR contracts, that was back in October as well, and just walked out, right? Paid the settlements and walked out. So I believe they might have a big argument there in place regarding this conflict. Now, you might say, Mick, that that is just a theory, but it's a plausible theory. Think about it. You know, you wouldn't like to sell to your enemy in a certain sense if you're supporting and funding certain groups. I know it's a wild theory, but still. Um, on the other hand, um, why would you lie in the SAC finding to uh, sort of implicate yourself? But if you have proof of funds, if the Qataris are now saying everything's been compliant, then damn, it's going to be a very, very interesting process to watch. It might be a very legal, big legal implication. I'm going to speak to Swedish Rumble about this, who is a legal and good friend of mine, what he's saying as well. So this is just me presenting what is out there. It's not my news or my, th I'm just putting my thoughts to it. At the end of the day, Jesus Christ. Um, I mean, ask yourself the question, right? If you were part of a bidding for a house and you got um, wrongfully dismissed, even if you knew you had the highest bid in evaluation, right? What would you do? Would you complain? Would you give up? Would you go for the next house? You spent like, you know, 12, 14 months of working on this, week in, week out, submitting paperwork here and there. And um, 
I don't know, man. At the end of the day, what matters now for me is that we move on as a club. Um, if there is a pathway for a full takeover, I'd be damn interested to see that path. Um, as for now, it's a lot of PR. I back what is currently there, but with trepidation, meaning that so far it's been a lot of PR and the proof will be in the summer in the pudding, right? It's not a rebuild. It's not like a switch of a light switch like this. Changes will not happen over one night. I do understand that. It will take about two to three years to fully have an implementation, to fully get rid of everything and to compete. But I don't think that Ratcliffe at the moment have the time or the patience. You know, he's on the borrowed time at the moment because if he doesn't succeed, he knows that there's uh, billions of Manchester United supporters will be standing there with the fork, <laughs> you know, with the hay fork to chase them out as well. Um, but anyway, guys, there's uh, 50 of you right now tuned in on your lunch break. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts and feelings. And uh, let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Jay Green, um, glad to see you back. Any chance of increasing sound? A bit low. Is it a bit low? Maximum, maximum. Am I shouting? Can you hear me? Thank you for pointing that out. Seven billion was not enough, according to Elian Tenno. No, not with the Super League lingering and uh, on the horizon. You're right. You're right, Alien. But again, Alien, you decide who you want to sell to, right? Even if you receive you know, good enough bid. Right. There was definitely some hanky-panky shit going on behind the scenes, according to my opinion, but that is my opinion alone. It was all suspicious, right? And the media was treating this like a transfer story. Right? Somebody was in the pole position, somebody was uh, leading the race, X, Y, Z, and um, boom, there you go. All of a sudden, out of nothing, Club statement, nothing else. But we haven't heard any cl club statement or whatsoever statement from the 92 Holding Foundation. They're holding back for some reason. And perhaps this is the lawsuit, what they're feeling. They've been hard done. Anyway, we're just here. Um, yeah, we need to talk about Rain Group, 100% Jamie Wayne. I know, I know, I know. Because Rain Group, at the end of the day, they received a commission. Nobody knows how much commission they received. But it's been reported that Manchester United spent over fifty million pounds on lawyers field, not from the Glazers' pockets, but from the club's pocket. <laughs> How's that? Why would you go this lengthy process to spend fifty million on lawyers' fees and waste other people's money and lawyers just to end up with peanuts? They were desperate for cash, 100% they were. They were broke as a club, as Buccaneers is also crumbling. So this was kind of a quick fix loan. It's called debt to equity. You give me money, I give you X, Y, or shed. And every, if you read that contract, everything that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is now pumping in, let's say it's a stadium. He invests $1 billion from his own pocket in the stadium. That gets converted over to Class B shares. So that is a potential, a potential way for Ratcliffe to take full ownership at the end of the day. Um, anyway, yeah, big up to you, all, all of you. Um, it's all smoke and mirrors to deflect from the real issue, according to your opinion, fixing Manchester United after the Glazers rinsing us. Peter, it's all been a uh, illusional smokescreen trick uh, all along. It's clear and evidential, like, you know, the shadow bidding process was masterminded by the rain group, knowing that they're playing each other, not even knowing what, you know, is this bit really real? We are not allowed to tell you how much this bidder is, but if you want to raise, 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 you know what I mean? Um, smoke and illusions. And at the end of the day, the Glazers' popularity was <sighs> zero to none, right? The protest was getting louder. They were desperate to do something. It's been dragging its heels for over 12 months in the making. People getting impatient. Media was writing a lot of different reports. And out of nothing, in December 24th, the announcement came of ratification. And after that, it went so quick with the Premier League approvals, the SSC approvals, uh, the FA approvals. It went like that. It went like that. 
And football is a shady business nowadays, right? And at the end of the day, guys, we don't know much. But I think that with this, this is not the end. This is just the beginning of what might be something forcing the Glazers out. I don't know. I want to hear from you. If you watch this in retrospective, let me know your thoughts and feelings. Um, as a fan, 18 years of the Glazers' ownership, it's been diabolical. And the fact is that somebody just comes in and takes a control that is good as well. I'm not denying that, right? I'm, I'm not against Ratcliffe or, you know, Trollis Limited unless there's a path, unless it's not just PR, right? On this channel, we've been like, you know, protesting against the Glazers ever, ever since, I don't know, ever since we started, to be honest. And that has always been the core of this channel. We're not shying away from presenting different alternatives, opinions. But, um, damn, what are you thinking? Uh, let me see. I just ignored this uh, lawsuit in your opinion. Uh, it doesn't benefit us to improve Manchester United anyway. No, true, true, true. Uh, maybe this is a side dish. Maybe this is them seeking justifications. If you've been smeared, right? Your reputation all of a sudden been smeared and dragged in the mud. Of course you're going to sue. But will it make a difference? I don't think so. Will they come back eventually to buy the remaining of the shares within 18 months? Depends on how this pans out, right? If they did this towards the Qataris, they pissed on the wrong tree because then you pissed off all, all the other rich sheikhs down there in the Middle East. And I know some people say, I don't want to have state back and stuff like that. But it's a double-edged sword, right? It's a double-edged sword. For me, Glazes are still here. And don't forget that, right? It seems like we media has been doing the best for us for, to forget that Glazes are still running the, the show by saying that, you know, the operations is Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Dale Brailsford and stuff like that. Fine and dandy, fine. But we still have to ask, you know, ask the question, you know, what about the Glazers? What about the debt that's now overwritten one billion? Who's going to take care of that? Debt to equity, balloon payments, X, Y, Z. I don't know, man. There's a lot of um, questions to be answered, which I don't really have. I've been seriously switching off. Um, it's been boring, mentally draining as well, like, you know, covering this. And since it was announced, it was just, uh, okay, whatever. Let them do the thing. They promised the world to us fans, but we haven't seen much. I think the proof will be in the summer, to be honest, right? We all know that it's a massive clear out that needs to be done of not only like staff, director staff, but also Deadwood players, asset players, right? That's been collected from Jose Mourinho and up to now in even Van Gaal, right? So the proof will be in the pudding. Will they sell off these assets? Will they back the manager or will they sack the manager? Because right now there's a lot of noise going on that Ten Hag, our Ten Hag. This is the same, same, same story. And a matter of fact that Nobody ever since Sir Alex ever stayed three years full tenure contract as a manager. Everyone got sacked after 18 months. That's the nominative factor. Me personally, I don't want to sack another manager. Me personally, I want to see. I know that football has been dire. I know we have this injury. It's not an excuse. For me personally, what I would like to see I would like to see the club do something different. Stick to the manager to the end of this contract. And then if that doesn't work, I mean, if they, you know, if they're now saying that they're going to do like, you know, Omar Barada, you know, Wilcox and Ashford and everything, build a structure around the manager, give him the backing and support. So you can only focus being a track coach manager at the end of the day. You see how that goes for a year. You've got nothing to lose, right? And then assess it next next year because then he will be out of contract. It's not going to cost you anything to get rid of him. Because why I'm saying so right now, right now, if you're looking at the managers, 
is so many clubs looking for managers at the moment, right? It's not funny. So it's a little bit of a shortage of managers. And who is the best in class out there? It doesn't really make any sense to rip up two years of process. Potentially Nagelsmann, they've been saying. Potentially, right? But I think Nagelsmann will go to Liverpool for some reason. German manager schooled in the Gegenpressen, right? Ralph Ragnick. It's the similar style of football that Liverpool is already used to. That makes sense, you know. But for us, I think it's, in a way, if that doesn't work out next season, there will be better managers available to approach the next year. So why get into this boxing ring to fight for mediocre managers is available? That's just my opinion, though, guys. Anyway, lucky seeing Barma, what she's saying here. Uh, Mick, you believe Ineos could succeed by this approach, uh, handling up issues? Well, I'm surprised that they haven't really, you know, shut down the press. I mean, the press is free press. They can do whatever they want. They can write whatever they want. Um, but the other day I was watching, again, ESPN, and that is so anti-United. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. It might be just called Liverpool FC channel. And there, there is certain bitterness by, by, by media. Like, you know, they hate Manchester United because the way they was being treated all the way from Sir Alex Ferguson used to treat them as well. And certain being banned from press conferences. And if you attach, you, you, you just put Manchester United in your headline, right? It's Today is all about clicks. It's all about getting the attention and recycle that. But I think we fan base, we, you know, as a global fan base, we got immune to this. We got educated. Thanks to a podcast like myself calling it out, Steve House and, and many, many others. I, I think even think that Gobich is starting to do that as well. So big up, like, you know, as a fan base, we are growing to do that. Um, Box, what you're saying here, the Glazers have always been the big problem. But some of the players over the years have been real negative influences as well. We know who they are. And... I, I'm not a hater, like, you know, guys, if you've been watching this channel or if you're new, you know that I'm a club man, right? I, I'm not a player FC. Um, I'm not Ten Hag in. I'm not Ten Hag out. I'm, I put myself in doubt category because why? Because I do want to apply pressure to the players, um, to the manager. On paper, we are a good squad. On paper, we've seen that Ten Hag is a good manager. But I look at it from a 360 holistic perspective. There's been a lot of... Uh, it been handle a, a lot of shit to, to take care of. And with, without even talking about where they take over the scandals, the injuries, and you expect to not even been backed in January and been selling out and loaning out, uh, you know, half of your youngsters and squad. And you expect then all of a sudden to finish strong, hop on one leg. So we've been basically hopping on one leg the whole season. It's like we never played with the first 11 once. Or actually, we did twice. Um so there's a lot of things to be taken in consideration. And Ineos has a lot of things to be to handle. But so far, they've been doing it swiftly, dealing it internally. Like, you know, nothing is leaking out anymore. You don't even get leaked lineups, to be fair. Um, so, Stephanie Griffith, big up to you. So, saw a possible sign this morning of a place here called Maguire's Bridge. <laughs> Hopefully a good omen to beat Chelsea tonight. Speaking about uh, that, there was a potentially from Rashmino I received just now. I think it was on the Telegram. Let's see, Rashmino was saying here this confirmed. Um, bear with me, and Hang on a second. Yes, uh, Rashmino was saying Manchester United confirmed squad members versus Chelsea tonight. Onana, Heaton, Bayander. Dallo has traveled, Maguire has traveled, Evans and Varane has traveled together with Kwambala. So we do have a full fit um, back four, back line. The question is, will he start Varane? Will he start Evans? Or will he rest them for the Liverpool game? Do we really need to start strong in the back here? Because Chelsea has been toothless in a way. Um, then also in the midfield, Casemiro, Amrabat, McTominay, Maino, Eriksen, Mount. Fernandes, Ganacho, Anthony, Ahmad, Rashford, and Hoyland. That is confirmed travel over to London, guys. Looking forward for that, guy. But anyway, guys, um, season ticket price. What are you saying here? 5% for next season. Oh, Jesus. Right. It's expensive to go to football games now. I hear you, right? 
Wow. Um, what's the price of the meat pies over there right now? <laughs> the disgusting ones. Um, fishy Fish is here. Big up, Bobby. Um, I'm staying quiet because there's more twists and turns to come over this takeover. Me too. I'm staying quiet. It's so toxic even to have an opinion nowadays on the manager or the takeover. But I feel that this is not the last we hear about this story. This is just the beginning of something that's about to happen. And, and by the way, in January, there was also something brewing up regarding this sort of lawsuit. So this is just a follow-up, to be honest. Um, but will it will it will it make a difference, fishy fish? Right? Will it make a difference? Um, guys, there's 30 likes here. I'm just gonna wrap it up. Timmy's here. What's up? What's up? A lucky sing buddy. Let me know, guys, what you are thinking. Are we gonna slap burn the bridge down? Will, big up Willie. Long time, buddy. Uh, not all roads to deal to. No, I didn't say that. Um, leads to Doha. We were just basically discussing. Adam Crafton's um, article from The Athletic, if you missed it. Um, there's nothing we can do, do about it. Yeah, no, true. There's nothing we can do, Willie. Of course not. Um, yeah, per perhaps they're saving face, what you're saying here, if I'm reading you. I think there is, you know. But certainly, like if you have provided filings, which is misleading information, dis disinformation, there's grounds for actually lawsuits, and this is what this might be lead to. And um, yeah, this might not lead to, you know, Qatar is coming back in. No, hundred percent, no, hundred percent, no. But um, in a way, the irony of this and the thumbnail, the big mistake of Sheikh Yassin was that he could have got the club if he offered equal Class A, Class B shares according to the Cayman Island laws. If you read the SEC findings, filings. He did offer for majority of the money evaluation on the Class Bs. I think it was thirty-six dollars per share, but twenty-four for the Class As, and that's where the stumbling block was. If he only increased that thirty-six, thirty-six, perhaps he will go to club. Who knows? But then we have the implications with the conflict that went down there in the Gaza area as well. So that broke up on the 7th, I think it was October 8th or October 7th, something like that. And Qatar has been heavily backing the resistant fightings and being the intermediates. And you have Revich and Glazes being, I don't know if they are Zeds or something like that. You know, YouTube algorithm, forgive me. It's just me, you know, throwing it out there at the end of the day. Guys, big up to you. Uh, Guys, let's transition over to the football because this is also interesting. Let me know what, what you guys are thinking, right? Let me know what you're thinking. If you're watching this video in retrospective, I know it's not going to make a difference. Uh, the purchase has already been done, but it's more about justice at the end of the day. Like, you know, if you've been, you know, wrongfully accused or wrongfully hard done, of course, you're going to seek legal action. I would do that personally myself. Um, but any. End of the day, if you're watching this in retrospect, leave your comments there as well. Um, but we're going to talk football now, okay? I certainly believe the bridge will burn today. But footballing gods do exist. Um, we are so crap coming back from international breaks. It's like we just came back from pre-season or just started the pre-season. But today, it's going to be very interesting. I think they need to capitalize, right? We saw Villa got slapped yesterday 4-1. We saw Spurs losing as well. I mean, playing, oh man, come on. It's there for the taking. Spurs have like, you know, four very tough fixtures facing like, you know, City, Arsenal, Liverpool, come on. You know, and then you look at Villa, they are now starting to get their fair shares of injuries as well. They're playing Brentford as well in the next game. And then their tricky fixtures will come. So we just need to look at ourselves. If we can get result today, I certainly believe that on over the weekend we get the better hand or the Old Trafford against Klopp. Can we do a double over Klopp? Can we slap him? That would be something. What? Imagine if we get two wins here right now. Imagine the mood within this fan base was instantly turned. But Rashford, I can see comments rocking up is like playing with ten men. If you start Rashford, if you start McTominay, you're definitely playing with nine men. But then again. 
I was listening to Pochettino's press conference and then all his excuses about we are young, we are youth, we are an exhibition team. Yeah, you're damn right you are. But if, if Ten Hag beats you with a half to plead the squad tomorrow, why is not media going going on your case to sack you? Sitting 12th on the league, to be honest. Right. So Spurs will be Spursy, Villa will crumble, and Chelsea are Chelsea's, right? If we can't beat Chelsea today, then it's for me sayonara, to be honest, right? We should be beating them today. And we should be comfortably beating them with 2-1 at least to keep a clean sheet. Um, yeah, sorry, Brendan, tomorrow? You mean tonight? Yes, tonight. It is tonight. Sorry, my friend. It is. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah, guys, let me know what your score prediction will be. I go comfortably with... Ganacho will cook today. Ahmad will potentially start well. Mason Mount, will he start at his own stomping ground? Wow, cool. Um, yeah, West Ham are shit. Yeah. If, yeah, you saw the game. West Ham are shit. The rain screwed the first nice result. So many low scoring draws. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, man. Seriously. I go with a freaking 2 1 United, but my heart says we got it. We got to slap them, right? If Hoyland is firing, Canacho, Ahmad, yeah, we might see a 3 0. And wouldn't it be something if we just go there and annihilate and burn the bridge down? Yeah, wishful thinking. Guys, beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. It's been a sure pleasure talking to you. As what we discussed, we discussed about Adam Crafton's article from The Athletic regarding potential lawsuit from the United to Holding fund Foundation from disinformation. And let's see how that pans out. We will follow up on that one. But until then, guys, see you later on because we do have football games to play today as well. So big up to all of you. See you later on for the post-match reaction show as well. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe in retrospective. Been Mick Ruby here having my say, and hopefully we'll see you later on later on the day. Take it easy, peeps. See you till next time. Glory, glory, Manchester United and glazes out. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.